Welcome to the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. Hello, I'm the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Today, we are joined by the world's top whole food, plant-based body recomposition coach. He is a man with a master plan, and every time you flex on that bicep, you know exactly what his game is. He is exactly that. He is a fit vegan, for sure. With that, we welcome Max and C. going here to the show. Maxim, thanks for being here, my man. Yes, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for having me. All right, but before we get to it, man, I got to see you flex so you get those credentials up there. Let's see it real quick. Let's for see sure. It. And and if rumor there's... has it, it's oh. uh, it's not just the muscle that we're looking at today. We're going to have ourselves a little, yeah, look at that branding right there on the Fit bicep. Vegan. Yeah. Fit <laughs> vegan. You are all in for this, man. You live it day to day, and you're not afraid yes. to wear it literally on your sleeve. Any apprehension at all at getting that tattoo? I mean, that is awfully permanent, Maxim. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Not really, because I've been a part of this movement for almost a decade now. Um, and because of my personal story, which we're going to dive into, like it sealed the deal for me that people need to be eating plant based. And Fit Vegan is the first company that I built that did uh, very well. And I was like, I need to immortalize this uh, in a cool way where I would also get some branding out of it because I used to flex on every photo. So that's why I got it inside my bicep. <laughs> Marketing 101, man. I love it. Um, and I love the program. We are going to get into that in just a little bit. I know that you brought friend of the show, Dr. Laurie Marbus on board mm -hmm. recently, and now you guys are really able to customize meal plans based off of people's blood work, which blows my mind. So really all encompassing what you guys are doing there. We're going to get into that in just a little bit, but I can't imagine at one point in your life that you thought you would ever be running a company called Fit Vegan, but life circumstances being what they are certainly brought you down this road. Let's talk about your journey and what brought you here. Um, it really is kind of a, a tragic tale with triumph toward the end. For those who aren't yet familiar with your story, how did you get here today? Yeah, well, I'll start back to when I got into fitness originally. So, you know, I see a few medals on my wall behind me. If you're looking at the, the video version, um, you know, I used to be a, a basketball player for a long time. And then I got into bodybuilding I competed in bodybuilding that I got into powerlifting. And then I wasn't vegan at the time, got into powerlifting, developed an unhealthy relationship with food uh, at that point from extreme dieting. And so then got really chunky, <laughs> put on a lot of put on a lot of body fat. And then one day, uh, you know, I, I was with a friend of mine working out and he drove me to the gym. So I went with him after our ride to the gym and he stopped by a friend's apartment. He's like, I just need to go inside and grab some stuff. Do you want to come in? I was like, yeah, for sure. So I walked in and there's a runway, like a high fashion runway um, in the person's apartment. I was like, what kind of friend do you have here? It's like, well, this is my modeling agent, right? I'm just here to grab some comp cards, which are basically business cards for modeling. And then she looked at me and mind you, I'm 240 pounds. I'm six foot four, big chubby cheeks. Like I'm a big guy at this point. And she looks at me. She's like, I see something under those big chubby cheeks. You know, try losing a little bit of weight. We'll do a photo shoot and, you know, see how it goes. I was like, you know what? I've done bodybuilding. I've done powerlifting. I've done basketball. I've done a bunch of different sports. Let me just try this thing. So I was preparing to do a fitness competition, a fitness modeling competition. So I was already leaning out for the show. So I was like, well, once I'm lean enough, I'll just do a photo shoot and see how it goes. Leaned out, did a photo shoot. It was great. I booked some jobs. I made some money. I think I was working at Subway at the time, making whatever, like 11 bucks an hour. I can't remember how much it was a rate back then. <laughs> but I did my first photo shoot and I made like $300. I was like, that's like a week's worth of income <laughs> with people taking photos of me. This is crazy. So I was like, I need to do more of this thing. Screw Subway. And so... <laughs> What I did is um, I went to my agent. I was like, hey, I want to do more of this. She's like, you need to get skinnier. You're too muscular. You're too big. So I was wearing maybe like a size extra large for my shirts. And she's like, you need to be in a small medium, like a medium shirt. I was like, oh, my God. I've, like, I've worked so hard to develop my chest and my shoulders and my arms and my back. And so I was like, you know what? I've done all these other things. Let me just give this a full try. So I went on Google and I asked them, what's the fastest way to get skinny? Because I want to get start getting jobs, start getting paid. So first thing that came up, vegans. Vegans are skinny and weak. I was like, cool. I don't care if I'm weak. I just need to be skinny. <laughs> so again, you can be strong and be a vegan. I'll put that out there. But that was my original reason for going vegan. I just wanted to get skinny. And so I went vegan. I switched my breakfast. It used to be a dozen eggs for breakfast a bowl of oats and blueberries and peanut butter. I was eating three chicken breasts every two hours for five meals a day. 
with rice and broccoli, the traditional bro bodybuilding type of diet. To the next day when I went vegan, it was a bowl of frozen blueberries, dates, and bananas. That's, that was my transition. It was instant to eating vegan. I stopped strength training. I just did cardio. I stopped eating any form of high protein foods. I didn't know at the time that it was protein in, in plants, but no protein and just ate uh, vegan, which I didn't know. I didn't know how to eat vegan properly. So I was eating these fruits and vegetables for the most part. I didn't know about quinoa and grains and all that stuff. So it was just fruits and veggies. I lost 80 pounds in my first year. So I went from 240 pounds to about 160 pounds was able to, I got really skinny, was able to do some photo shoots, book some gigs. It was great. I went to Milan, Italy for fashion week, was able to work over there. Um, we kind of traveled the world from there. So that's originally what got me into veganism. What sealed the deal for me is as soon as I transitioned, I started to feel better. Like my nose clear, uh, cleared up because I didn't know I had tension in my nose and my forehead because that's how I lived my whole life. But as soon as I went vegan, I just noticed there was no tension in my nose and my forehead. And I was like, I can breathe properly. Not right now because I'm a little bit sick, but <laughs> I could breathe properly. Um, and I was like, what is that for? So I did some research, discovered dairy produces mucus. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Then went online, discovered the documentary Forks Over Knife, which was a game changer for me because at that time, when I watched this, they talked about the correlation between, you know, heart disease, cancer, and all these things with when it comes to your nutrition. My grandfather's got diagnosed with cancer at that time. And so to me, it was like an eye opener. I was like, oh my God, my grandpa does not eat well, right? His favorite snack, which is what he taught me when I was younger, is you grab toasted white bread. You melt butter on top of it, and then you add Nutella on top of it. Like that was, that was his go-to snack. So that's what I learned as my go-to snack when I was younger. So anyways, made that connection. I was like, man, he hasn't been eating well, hasn't been taking care of himself, and now he's sick. You know, unfortunately, he passed away a few weeks after his diagnosis. But that really sh shook me to my core, and I was like, I need to spread this word to people. And that was over nine years ago. And so I went to my parents and I became the evangelist. I was just like, you need to eat plant-based. You're killing yourself. You need to change how you're, <laughs> how you're eating. Mm -hmm. And then um, eventually I got tired of doing that. <laughs> so I just figured I, I needed to lead, lead by example. And people tend to listen more that way versus I was always preaching. So then I kind of went back into my own world. I was like, okay, like how can I lead by example? Well, let me accomplish cool things from a physical standpoint because that's what I'm good at. I'm really good at being able to manipulate my body. I can go all in when it comes to fitness. And so I decided to get an amazing shape. And then more people started asking me, you know, what are you doing? I was like, oh, tofu and tempeh and kale and broccoli. And they're like, there's no chicken or steak or fish or eggs in there. I was like, nope, I stopped doing that several years ago. So I was able to convert a little bit more people that way. And then, you know, fast forward several years of traveling and kind of just, you know, working out to stay fit. I land in Vancouver, Canada after maybe two years of hitchhiking across Canada, a little bit in Europe and some of the United States. I end up in Canada. I meet my ex-fiance. Um, you know, we hit it off within three months of us starting to date. She gets diagnosed with breast cancer. And then it was like a big shock. I was like, man, 22 years old at the time. And I was like, I love her, so I'm going to stay. And so I stayed with her for her whole journey, which was I uh, lasted almost five years. Um, before she passed away, unfortunately, mm. but she was vegetarian. She was vegetarian. She was eating fish and a little bit of eggs here and there. She was an entrepreneur who pushed herself, was living off, you know, some energy drinks, some protein bars and, you know, all the things that we know not to do. But when you're an entrepreneur and you're building, it's just so easy to fall into it. And then eventually it was too much for her body and she got sick and we got it tested. Her cancer wasn't genetic. It was created by lifestyle. And so that was one big eye opener for me. And then when she was vegetarian, she got diagnosed. I was like, hey, you need to go with like whole food plant based because that's how I've been eating for the past several years. And there's a lot of studies showing that it helps. She's transitioned to eating whole food plant based, stopped consuming any form of animal products. The doctor originally gave her one year to live. She made it almost five years because mm -hmm. her inflammatory markers went down. Like everything started improving when she went whole food plant based. And so, you know, unfortunately, it wasn't enough for her to be able to, to conquer and win this battle. But she got an amazing quality of life throughout those, those five years. And I'm very blessed that I was able to be there with her on this last chapter of her life and this journey. Um, and it was what set me on my current direction now of wanting to help people disease proof their body. Yeah, man, let's, that's a lot, especially for someone at 
22 years old. How old was she at the time? <laughs> She's a little bit older than me. Uh, she was 12, 12 years older than me. So she was 34. No shame in that game. I will not say how old my wife is, but um, there's there's well, no shame in that. My, my fiance is 16 years older than me, so <laughs> there's a go. pattern here. <laughs> You've got a type, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just so much for somebody to take in at such a, a, a young age. Were there like good days and bad days? Were there, were, were there days where a lot of, I guess, hope just kind of sprinkled in and and you thought like okay well maybe we we can beat this thing even though you were given or she was given just a year to live she survived five i would imagine that there were some pretty good days in that that span yeah well a big part was her and i we had delusional optimism <laughs> there was just no way in her mind that she wouldn't conquer this that she wouldn't win this there's not even an ounce of doubt throughout all the time until she passed away until she was not when I was in that hospital bed with her, there was not an ounce of doubt that she, you know, wouldn't win this thing. And so yeah, there were some down days because you know, you wake up to screams in the middle of the night at 3am because you know, the, the tumor is just causing stress and tightening her chest and her throat because it was hardening the skin. Um, so yeah, there's those nights where you wake up, you're like, well, this, this is this is a lot to deal with. This is really challenging. But I'll be honest, there was never an ounce of doubt in me that she wouldn't make it through it until she didn't. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of of ups and downs throughout the process because it's very expensive, right? She, um, I respected her decision. She decided to not go with conventional treatments um, and go simply with alternative therapies. She's someone that she didn't even take Advil for all of her life. So she didn't really want to go and do chemo and do any of those other things. So she decided to just heal with alternative medicine which I didn't really know what that involved at the time, but it involved uh, it not being funded by the government and it involved being funded by the Bank of Mexim. So it was a very expensive journey and it uh, put me severely in debt for five plus years, which thankful that I paid off uh, this past year. But it, it was a, yeah, it was a very challenging journey to say the least. No doubt, man. Uh, I'm sorry for everything that that you went through. And I would hope that people who are watching and listening to this right now don't kind of lose their resolve for looking at leading a healthier lifestyle, eating a healthier diet. Um, we talk a lot of times in terms of reducing the risk. And I mm -hmm. feel like the message reduce the risk gets translated into a lot of minds is automatically makes you bulletproof. That's never yeah. going to be the case. It's always about reducing the risk. Um, but nonetheless, I do think that it says a lot about you as a person for staying there with her throughout that entire journey and then continuing it, uh, your mm -hmm. own journey here to this day where you're continuing to reach out and help and, and change people's lives. I just think that that speaks volumes about who you are, Maxim, as a human being. Thank man. you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, to, to the point of bulletproofing, I always like to use the analogy of a seatbelt, right? Eating whole food, plant-based, being physically active, keeping your body weight healthy. It's just like a seatbelt when you're in the car, right? If you're in a car accident, you're not guaranteed that you won't die, but you're greatly reducing your risk of it versus if you don't have your seatbelt. So, you know, doing all those core basic things of eating whole food, plant-based, exercising, pr prioritizing your sleep and your mental health, that's you putting on your seatbelt for life. So you have these two tremendous losses, your grandfather, then your fiance, and that sets you out on this mission, man, the mission that continues to this day where you want to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and to the best of their abilities, disease proof their bodies on plants by 2033. And then man, you are talking, boy, you want to talk about upscaling. 1 million by 2050, man, you are, you truly are a man on a mission. Do you think that you'd be so driven had it not been for those experiences? Yes and no, but I don't believe I would have been as driven in that direction. Um, I've always been someone that's been motivated and disciplined to accomplish the things that I set out their mind to, which is why I've been able to do all these races, accomplish all the transformations that I've ever wanted, accomplish all the goals that I've ever wanted to reach. Is that so far in my life? The reason being is because I'm very patient. I'm impatiently patient. Um, I don't just give myself a year to reach a goal. I give myself however long it takes for me to reach that goal. And so whatever, if it takes me 10 years when I said it was going to take one, I still reached my goal. I still got what I wanted out of it. So 
I've always been disciplined and motivated, but definitely it wouldn't have been in a similar direction because losing my grandfather wasn't, you know, it was impactful, but not as impactful because I didn't live with him. I didn't care for him uh, in terms of like helping him go to the bathroom, helping him get dressed, helping them to eat and seeing for almost five years straight. You know, she, at one point she had a hard time dressing herself, like helping her get in the car, carrying all her bags and, you know, driving her to cancer treatments, waking up in the middle of the night to scream. Like it just, it just molds you and shapes you in a different way. And you start to realize how, how bad it is once you start to lose your health and how much this person would literally give everything they have to be able to just be healthy. Um, and so that was such a big wake up call for me. And being someone that is very type A, entrepreneurial, wanting to push and accomplish, I was like, if I don't watch out for myself, I could end up in this position as well. So there's a big wake of call for me. And then it made me want to help other people with that. So what kind of changes did you implement in your own life during this time? Obviously, you're already eating a pretty clean diet, but what else did you do here to try to shore up your immune system, make yourself as bulletproof as possible? Yeah. So what, the big one was prioritizing my sleep, right? Because you think of not taking care of yourself. You think of being entrepreneur or pushing uh, in your life or being a type A. You think of doing as much as you can, and then you're going to cut back on the things that you can cut back on. And a lot of people think that at sleep, and that was the same for me. I was like, I don't need to sleep as much. I can sleep you know, four or five hours a night because I want to work on this project or I want to do this thing or I want to work out some more because that's when I was training for half Ironmans and triathlons, which I've done over you know, 25 of them at this point. Um, so prioritizing my sleep was a huge one and just allowing my body to rest because that stress really does compound throughout the years to create an environment where potentially your body is weaker and more susceptible to diseases or to sickness or illness that could come your way. So prioritizing my sleep was a big one, just tightening up my nutrition on, on eating whole food plant-based because, you know, we all have our moments where we slip or we go for a little bit of vegan ice cream or things like that. So tightening that up. And then being smarter with my exercise, because like mm -hmm. I mentioned, I was doing a training for half Ironmans and triathlon, which that was my way of coping with the cancer. Right. I'm, I don't I don't do drugs. I don't do alcohol. That was never my thing. Fitness has always been my thing. So that was my way of coping with the stress, just numbing, numbingly being able to shut off my brain while I'm biking for four hours, running for four hours. Right. Or swimming for several hours. That was my my escape. But then training that much comes with a lot of stress around the body. If you're not recovering properly, then you're more likely to get sick. So just being more efficient with my training is another big thing that I changed. And then, you know, you start this company fit vegan and you do though, you start to see those happier endings that yeah. you I'm sure we're hoping for all along and just poking around on your website and seeing some of the before and the after photos of the lives who you've been able to touch and the clients whom you've worked with, I would imagine that there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes with each and every one of them, isn't there? Absolutely. Because I know that I greatly reduced our risk of dealing with any of those chronic illnesses, right? I'm always upfront with people before we work with them. I'm like, I get selfishly, I get something out of us working together. Right. Like I will give you the body that you want. I will help you shape and mold and look a certain way and have the energy that you want. Really good at that. But selfishly, what I get out of it is I know that I'm helping you live in a way and eat in a way that is greatly reducing your risk of having to deal with any of this. Right. I don't want anyone to have to go through what my ex partner went through. And so that's the my little non ish selfish exchange that I get out of working with people. So yeah, there's a lot of satisfaction. Um, either some people that come to us just to be healthier, not even for body composition changes. So that's really rewarding to see that people are acknowledging that this is an important area of their life and that they need to do something about it. <laughs> you know, one of the best before and afters that's featured prominently on your website is another person who's very close to you. And that is your mom. And so yeah. here's your mom. Like if you ever needed a testimonial, just the fact that you got your mom to do this and to see her before and after is just amazing. What was her journey like? How was it working with her? Cause she lost 50 pounds, man. Yeah. Has kept it off for three plus years now and eats as much as my dad to maintain it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So it, it was a really, it was really cool because 
you know, growing up, I always wanted to be more muscular and bigger. And so my mom weighed about 185 pounds when I was in my teenage years. And my goal was to be as heavy as my mom. <laughs> my, my dad's six foot eight, 240 pounds. I was like, that's far for me. That's far fetched. But like my mom is a bit more achievable. So I wanted to weigh as much as my mom. And little did I know my mom was, you know, wanting to lose the weight because she didn't like the weight that she was at. And so for, you know, like a, a decade plus, she struggled with losing the weight. She did, you know, ma uh, Maker's Diet, Atkins, Paleo, whatever. She just tried everything. And so when I started Fit Vegan, I was like, hey, mom, like, I know I can help you with this. Um, and I know that you're going to trust me because I'm your son. You know, I have a choice, <laughs> right? I know you're going <laughs> to trust me with this. But there's only one thing is I need you to go vegan to do it because there's no way that I can ethically add chicken or fish or whatever to your meal plan. She's like, you know what? Like I've been struggling with this for over a decade. Let's go for it. And so that was over three years ago. And she was able to, again, lose those 50 pounds. Took her about eight months. Then we sped up her metabolism for about four months after. And then she's been able to maintain the 50 pounds off since that time. So over three years now that she's kept the weight off while eating more food, while being able to sustain her physique. And it's really cool because I, um, I haven't lived in the town that I grew up with where my parents lived for a while. So while she was in her transformation, all I saw was photos on her app. I was like, oh, she's losing weight. But when I got to see her in person, it was so it was so cool. She saw me and she's like, look at my biceps. She's like, I have, I have abs now. And she looked at her shirt. She's like, I have a six pack now. She was so excited. So it was really cool to be able to give that to her. That's amazing. And I'm looking at another photo on your website as well of a woman who started off at 150 pounds and lost 25. But those 25 pounds don't even begin to tell the story because it, like it looks like she lost so much more than that she had these round chubby cheeks the double chin um a lot of junk in the trunk as my wife would say and then down at 125 like almost unrecognizable man it's like this 25 pound weight loss that actually looks closer to like 75 or 80 pounds what happens in a person's body to like change that much even though we're only talking about 25 pounds here because like that inflammation that swelling it was just gone she looks like a completely different person yeah and so that's basically what a shift in body composition for a lot of people right a lot of people think that it's it's converting fat to muscle and that's what kind of causes people to transform it's not really how it works you buy you want to lose the fat and build the muscle so a lot of people, when they do fat loss phases, they do drastic calorie deficits to lose the weight. But when you do a, a drastic calorie deficit, your body's more likely to sacrifice lean muscle mass along with fat as well, but you're losing lean muscle mass. And so what you're doing is you're becoming lighter on the scale, but you're decreasing your two variables, which are, let's just say fat and muscle. So you're decreasing your fat and muscle variables. You just end up looking like a skinnier, fluffier, lighter version of yourself. So when we look at that Sunila's transformation, I know which one you're talking about, we help her increase her lean muscle mass and decrease her body fat. So muscle does weigh more than fat, right? And so that's why that's driving the scale in the opposite direction. But by losing the fat, we're driving the scale down. So if she didn't put on any muscle, maybe she would have been 115 pounds or 117 pounds. But because we're able to put on some muscle, her physique looks completely different. And that's why it doesn't feel like there's a huge difference in her weight compared to how much she changed because she actually lost a lot more fat than she did, but she put on some muscle, which is the thing that drove up the scale to be a little bit higher. But that's what basically a proper shift in body composition is. And what about somebody, and I'll use myself as an example, right? Lost an extreme amount of weight, kind of plateaued here or bottomed out at 140. I do mm -hmm. feel like on certain days that I would like to add some more muscle mass to me because I did lose and I don't think that there's any way that you can go from 420 to 140 and maintain 100% of the muscle that you, you once had. But yeah. how would a person healthfully go about adding maybe another 10 pounds of muscle just to kind of firm things up a little bit, get a little bit more fit? Yeah, for sure. So a big part is I would try to figure out where are you at with your calories currently? Like how much food are you currently consuming? Um, and then if your calories are really low compared to where you should be, uh, then we potentially do a little something called reverse dieting is what we do with our members to help them speed up their metabolism post fat loss. So what that does, it allows you to maintain your weight while eating more food. And it also acts as a lean bulk, right? Cause there's more energy 
you can build recover and build muscle a lot faster. So therefore you shift your body composition. So even if your fat variable stays the same and you increase your muscle one, there's a shift in body composition automatically, right? It's not that both have to move at the same time. So I would potentially do a little reverse dieting, which would act as a lean bulk. Once you get closer to your maintenance calorie, I would just maybe go like 200 calories over that. Because again, you just want to have a little bit of that surplus. Your body has enough energy to properly be able to recover from the training that you're doing. Because when you're in a deficit, your body is starving a little bit for, for some energy for the recovery. And muscle is not the most important thing that your body is going to prioritize when it's an energy deficit. Right? Mm. I like to always like to explain this way to people. Your body is a survival and adaptation machine doesn't care that you're trying to lose weight, doesn't care that you're trying to have bigger biceps or build your butt, flatter stomach, whatever it may be. All it cares about is will Chuck survive as long as possible, right? And so if you go into a steeper calorie deficit, your body starts to freak out a little bit. It needs to be able to adjust to perform as much as you are on your day-to-day -day basis, all the activities that you do, all the movement that you do, all the workout that you do on less energy because there's less food coming in. If that calorie deficit is massive or big, like some people like to create, then your body is going to go, okay, we need to stop spending energy on things that are non-essential to our survival. Muscle is not essential to survival and muscle requires a lot of energy to be able to sustain itself. And so when you're in that steep calorie deficit, your body will let go of muscle mass. You start to lose muscle mass. And like you mentioned, if you go from 400 plus pounds to where you're at now, undoubtedly, you're going to lose some muscle mass throughout the process because it's a bigger journey. But the steeper calorie deficit, your body will sacrifice more lean muscle mass ultimately. And then you start like your body composition starts to go down because you just look skinny fat ultimately. So to answer your original question, reverse diet, little surplus, and then just exercise at that rate because you want to create a conducive environment to your body being able to build muscle, right? Which needs that little surplus of energy. And generally speaking, when you're talking about reverse dieting, are you talking about increasing the overall volume of food that the person's already been eating? Or are you recommending something that's a little bit more calorically and fat dense, like nuts, avocados, seeds, those types of things? Great question. Mixture of both. So reverse dieting is where we slowly and methodically re-add calories on a weekly basis, depending on how your body's responding. So what we do, what we add the calories with is with carbohydrates and not fat. Because when you're at the end of a fat loss phase, you're in a steeper calorie deficit, your body's more sensitive to put on fat because again, it's wired for survival. It just wants to store fat because that's energy for the future, right? And you potentially have less because you did a fat loss phase and you're in a deficit. So by if we add fat as a, as a means to increase your calorie intake, your body's more likely to store it as fat because it's a more sensitive state. But if you add carbohydrates, for example, a banana, your body doesn't go, oh, a banana just came in. I need to store it as fat for the future. It goes like quick available energy. Let's use it right away. So your body's able to metabolize the carbohydrate and utilize it as energy for the day. And if we do that over the course of weeks, which takes about four months to do a full reverse dieting, we just slightly add more carbohydrates every day on a weekly basis. And your body goes like, yes, more energy, let's use it. Yes, more energy, let's use it until you go back up to your maintenance calorie. So we're just slowly adding food. I'll, I'll try to simplify it in an, in an analogy. So your metabolism, let's just say it's a flame. Um, Chuck, have you ever gone camping before? Or started many times. Fire it's, it's been a while, but many, many times. Perfect. So when you have a small flame, when you go to start your fire, right? You don't, the first thing you do is you don't throw a big log of wood on it because the flame can't handle it right? That's your metabolism during your fat loss phase. Most people, what they do is they go back to eating normally, or they go back to kind of their old ways after they're done losing the weight. It's a big log on a piece of wood. And then by the time the flame catches up to being able to handle the piece of wood, people put the weight back on. So how do you make a small flame bigger efficiently? You throw smaller pieces of wood on it over time and eventually it grows, it grows, it grows, it grows. Eventually you can burn down a whole forest if you want to, right? Don't recommend you do that, but you have a raging fire. So that's how you speed up your metabolism. You just slowly and methodically re-add food on a weekly basis, depending on how your body's responding. Sometimes it'll go up, sometimes it'll stabilize. There's a whole process to it, but basically it's by adding carbohydrate because it's quick available energy that your body can utilize. Fascinating. And I'm sure that those are a lot of the details that you get into uh, with your clients as you're building these custom meal plans, which is fascinating. Um, you were telling me that now that Dr. Laurie Marvis, our friend, is on board, um, that you guys can really individualize these diet plans based off of a person's blood work. 
How yeah. does that work? I think a lot of us are really fascinated by what has become one of the more um, sought after emerging sciences. It's really just kind of mind blowing stuff, man. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, with the blood work, you will, I will be able to identify some of the deficiencies that this person has. And also the big reason that we started doing that as well is because some people will come to us to work, uh, to work with us. And then they tell us what kind of where their health is at, what the, if they have any conditions of any sort. And then we build them a meal plan and they're like, I'm not feeling too good. Like my energy is not great. I'm like, do you have any allergies? They're like, no, I don't have anything, any condition. I have nothing. And then we do a test and then they have PCOS. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that changes how we would do your nutrition <laughs> for your fat loss phase, right? Or hypothyroidism or whatever. Then that changes how we would do the nutrition. So by adding the blood work, we're able to catch these things, also catch the deficiencies. And then with the nutrition platform that we use, we're able to isolate the vitamins and minerals that we want to have more of in certain foods. So when we build a plan, we can make sure that there's more of certain thing. And then we do another blood work to retest to see where the levels are at, to see where the body is at. And then we just continue to make adjustments like that from there. That is amazing. And, you know, there's some people who also then will take it a step further. And obviously there's the big book called uh, Eat Right for Your Blood Type. Um, some experts swear by it. Others say that doesn't necessarily matter. Do you guys take blood type into account at all? No, yeah. no. We keep it whole food plant based. We address the deficiencies with the vitamins and mineral, but we keep it whole food plant based for the most part. Right on. And, and what are some of the more common kind of I guess, conditions that you are seeing among your clients, right? You just mentioned like, well, we just found out that you have PCOS. So of course, you know, this makes sense now. So, um, you know, what are some of the more surprising conditions that can pop up in, in these tests and you guys then are able to get the person some help? Yeah, so PCOS, hypothyroidism are some of the two big ones. Um, rarely, we, ha we work with people that have Crohn's, but rarely do they discover it out of working with us. They usually know before they come to us. Um, osteoporosis, which doesn't change too much in terms of like, we change a little bit of how we do the nutrition. We have a lot of people that are cancer survivors that are coming back, that are coming to us to be able to, you know, reduce their risk of a reoccurrence. We had people that had a cancer scare that are coming in to, again, reduce the risk of it actually becoming a cancer. Um, so we pretty much work with everyone. The only type is if they currently have cancer and they're undergoing chemo and therapy and radiation, um, their body's under enough stress right now. So we don't work with people that are currently going through cancer, but before or after to help them rebuild their health, we definitely do that for sure. All right. And the last thing that I want to ask you about, we, we've talked about your mom and we, we didn't get into her age, but also one of the stories that really she's stood young. out to me. Is she? All right. Their <laughs> she, mama. She's 58. 50. All old. right. 58. Well, then, all right, she's 58, but I got to ask you about Nancy, who was 68. You have a video of 68-year-old Nancy getting abs for the first time in her life when she's daggone near 70 years old. My man, a lot of people are going to say that's just not possible. Nancy says, yeah, boom, here's the proof. How in the world does somebody get abs at 68, Maxim? Yeah, we're just going to say it's Dr. Nancy as well, oh. too. Do oh, my bad. Dr. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, so she, let us not, but, you know, forget the credentials here. Yeah, just say, like, even with someone that's a doc, we work with a lot of doctors to help them in their own transformation. Like, I'm coaching Dr. Lori on her transformation as well for her body composition and some of the fitness goals that she has and that she wants to accomplish. Um, so the big part, the fundamentals work for everyone, right? It's just we like to start everyone off with, obviously, the blood work. We do uh, your meal plan and we build your custom training plan. The first phase that we do with members is us trying to build the most accurate plan for them. But the reality is, as they move along in the process, we can get data on them, on how their body is responding. Then we can make more powerful adjustments, right? So it's simply a matter of, you know, building the training plan, building a nutrition plan, observing how their body is going to respond, then making adjustments as they move along. There is no clear game plan, and I wish there was. I could be like, here are all the steps that we do to get someone to this transformation. But the reality is if Dr. Nancy comes in and is you know, 90% 90, 90 compliant, it's going to be a pretty smooth journey. But if she has one week where she's busy with work and she's not doing all her workouts and not fully respecting her nutrition, then that changes how we're going to adjust her training nutrition the following week. And so it's very much dependent on how the person's body and life is happening and that's how we make those adjustments so it's literally fully custom to them because you and i can go into a program together we would respond differently and it wouldn't make sense that we would have the same game plan
but overall focusing on strength training to retain and build lean muscle mass and strengthen her bones and improve her body composition. Make sure that she has enough protein with her whole food plan based meal plan. Make sure she's not too big in a calorie deficit so that she can build lean muscle and retain that lean muscle tissue and just focus on losing body fat, making sure she's prioritizing her sleep and then just doing those light little adjustments gradually over time as she progresses. And then eventually you wake up and you have a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> are that there, hard are, but that simple <laughs> right on i got you man are there certain things though that you need to take into account for somebody who is almost 70 years old as you're putting these plans together that you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about so much with someone who was in their 20s 30s or maybe even 40s for sure from a nutrition standpoint obviously we're looking at, at the blood work and kind of see if they have any health conditions which typically when you get to the 60 70 80 year old range which i think is our oldest members 82 um there's typically more health conditions or more injuries that we have to deal with and kind of work around. But obviously how we build a training plan is what makes a big difference uh, because a lot of them are going to have, you know, had surgery on the hips, on the knee, and I, you know, torn my shoulder 20 years ago. So there's a lot of physical limitations that we have to work around when it comes to exercise. So we want to make sure that we're building a plan that will be tailored around strengthening those key areas that potentially might be weaker because of injury or because of a surgery. And then just focusing on building up their level of fitness gradually over time. Like I wouldn't make some uh, one of our members that's seven years old do the same workout that I'm doing, right? We just want to build, meet people where they're at with their fitness level and then slowly build from there. Yeah, but I would imagine some of the, some of the, you know, clients come in there. I don't care how old they are. They're going to be gung-ho. They're going to want to go toe-to-toe with you, right? You get some ultra competitive people too. For sure. Those are my platinum partners. Yeah, we got a few of them that are just like, <laughs> I want to bike as fast as you. I want to bike as long as you. I was like, you don't need to. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's so cool. And and you're able to see people really kind of wherever they are in, in their homes, right? This is all done virtually? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're in over 20 different countries. Um, so that's the beauty of, of social media and online. We've been able to impact the lives of people that are in Australia and Greece and Italy and Germany, United States and Mexico. So it's been really fun to be able to work with people from all over the world and just to learn culturally, right? Food is very different when you go from Greece to Italy to France to Mexico to obviously United States. Um, so it's been really rewarding to be able to impact people all around the world. Yeah. How do you put together individualized meal plans when you have to take these different cultures into account? Yeah, certain preferences that they that they'll mention before they come in. They have a, they have forms to fill out when they come in of specific types of food that they like to they enjoy to eat. Some of the times, the food that they're on there they shouldn't be eating, so we don't want to add those to their meal plan. Um, but you know, some people it's like I love curry or spaghetti or sandwiches or pasta or whatever it may be. So we make sure to include a little bit of like whole food versions of that within the plan. Wow, dude. I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm just scrolling through your website and I'm looking at all these photos and I'm just like, my mind is blown. Dr. Nancy is not the only person who is up there in age. Like you literally are. And I love this so much about the stories that we hear on the exam room. And now what I'm looking at at your website is, Maxim, it's never too late to make changes. It's never too late, man. Yeah, no, it's never. We got Patrick on the website, 53, first six pack of his life. We have another member, Barry, who's starting to see his abs now for the first time in like two decades. Um, his photos look awesome. It's like a five to 10 pound difference in his photo, but there's a huge difference in his body composition. And he's, you know, nearing 70, I believe. So regardless of the age, the transformation is possible. It's just, you know, we want to manage expectation that we're not going to make you train like when you were 20 or 30 years old. And the reality is potentially, you know, a bit more injuries or physical limitations that we have to work around and strengthen before we get there. Potentially some damage has been done to your health that we need to address before we go a little bit more aggressive into the body composition. And so it's just about meeting people where they're at. And so far, regardless of the age, we've been able to help people transform. The the oldest, I said the oldest, but the youngest person that, been, that we've worked with is like 81, 82 years old. Um, Hey, if there's a 90 year old out there that wants to get fitter, would love to work, <laughs> would love to work with you. I believe there's no boundary to the age. It's about meeting people where they're at. That is so, so cool, man. I can only imagine like, you know, seeing the six pack for the first time. I remember seeing my feet for the first time in decades when I lost the weight. I thought that was a big deal, man. I can't imagine what it would be like to look in the mirror and see a six pack staring back at me. That's 
amazing stuff, man. And my hat's off to you to be able to do this and transform lives and doing it because of everything that you've been through for mm. doing it for the right reasons, man. Um, it really has been just a joy to be able to chat with you today. You are something special, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chuck. And, you know, one, one thing I'd just like to add for, for the people listening is there's a big giving back aspect to, to what we do. So I run six different companies. Um, and out of all those six companies, we always put a percentage aside of, of the revenue to donate to families that are battling cancer. I don't go through any nonprofit organization. We donate directly to the families to make sure that they get 100% of the funds. Because I remember what it was like when I was being the caregiver, when I was like, I'm making $12,000 a year working at a smoothie bar and the treatments that I'm paying are $6,000 a month. Uh, and so being able to do that for other people, which I wish someone was able to do for me when I was going through it, is really rewarding. I let our members choose who's receiving the funds every month. Um, and then I just make the donation on behalf of our whole family. And we also partner with another nonprofit called See This Guy Thrivers, who helps educate and empower people that are currently dealing with chronic illnesses on how to fuel themselves on a whole food plant based diet to reverse or prevent the risk of some of those chronic illnesses. And so I have a deal with them that I, if I buy one course, it goes to three people versus one. So we're able to triple our impact with them. So all about education and helping fund some of the treatments and the grocery bills that they have, that the cancer patients have to deal with. Absolutely fantastic, man. Your heart is in the right place. Your work is on point. The results are definitely on point, man. And again, thank you so much for your time today. This has just been absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.